Fucked up sports. Everybody, this is Don LaGreca from the Michael K Show. When it comes to talking sports, Bob Walters and Brett Grasso are the authority. Can't wait. When it comes to talking sports, they're the authority. It's Bob Walters and Brett Grasso. Fuck up sports, and it starts now. Bring them out, bring them out, hey. Bring them out, bring them out, yo. Bring them out, bring them out, hey. Bring them out. Here we go. Bob Walters from the Brian Council Studios. This is Locked Up Sports. The Rangers come from behind with a late goal to tie it. And they scrape out a point up north in Toronto. The Islanders get a big win as they get a, tr- a hat trick in the first period from Palmieri. The Knicks with a big game tonight. And it's March. March Madness. We look at the bubble teams and the Big East tournament coming up. All that and more. Right here on Locked Up Sports. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Bob Walters, your host. Uh, I'm alone today. Brett is out. He's uh, he's injured again. He was questionable coming in. He, he is he's out for the night. Injured, injured back. So he he's questionable now for next week. But I, I think he'll be ready to go next week. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in, watching. However you consume our program here. Um, Remember, you can always find us at LockedUpSports.net. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. And uh, we're powered by the Vouch Store. As always, Vouch.Store slash LockedUpSports. Vouch.Store slash LockedUpSports. Um, let's start with the, with the Knicks. With this breaking news real quick here. I got it right here that uh, Donovan Mitchell is out tonight against the for the, for the Cleveland Cavaliers against the Knicks. And this, this is a big help for the Knicks okay the Knicks obviously are limping in they've been limping into every game recently they, they're two and seven since the Bogdanovich uh, trade and and when they got rid of Grimes to Detroit and they got Bogdanovich and they got Burks and and so far they've been underwhelming to say the least I mean Bogdanovich missed every shot he took the other night against Golden State he had they they each of them both of them have, have not been shooting the, the Knicks made that trade to get points off the bench and they're not getting any points from these guys, okay? Like I said, Bogdanovich missed every shot. He hit four free throws the other night against uh, Golden State, so he had four points. You have Burks, who just has he, – Burks has been averaging uh, five points a game, 31% from the field since the trade. I mean, what are you doing? We'd be better off with Grimes because at least then he can play defense and he can score points. You know, he, he could put up five points a game. You didn't get Burks and Bogdanovich to put up five points a game, and they they both had a they had one big game each too. The first game they played against the Sixers, the uh, Bogdanovich went for twenty two. He went six of six from from beyond the arc. He was great. So and and since then the Knicks and and listen, I get it. It's not really a fair evaluation because of the fact that they didn't come here. They kind of been patching holes. The Knicks have, and they've just been doing anything they can with. Anobi, Mitchell Robinson, and Julius Randle just MIA, out injured. Uh, Randle with the the shoulder, um, Mitchell Robinson with the ankle, and uh, OG Anobi with the with the elbow. And I mean, Anobi is another one. The, a month ago, we were sitting here, we were telling you how the Knicks hands down won the the trade deadline in the entire NBA. Knicks were the winners, right? Now it's a month later, and we're sitting here and and. You got Anobi's been on the shelf for now three weeks. When is he coming back? I haven't heard anything definitive about that. You have uh, Burks and Bogdanovich, who were the, the late acquisition from Detroit. That has not really panned out, right? They, they're not scoring off the bench. The Knicks are 2-7 and seven since that trade. So as far as the, the trade deadline goes, which something that looked so promising a month ago when it, when it happened, now is kind of, eh. And the Knicks have just continued to, to fall. And they're going to continue to fall in the standings. And that's why tonight's game is huge. 7.30 ESPN in Cleveland. Cleveland is the two seed. The Knicks are the four right now. But they have the five and the six right on their tail. So the Knicks got to get it together. You end up in that six seed and you're going to have to play, uh, you know, somebody like Milwaukee. You're not going to win that, that, that series. The Knicks are not beating Milwaukee as the six seed in the first round. And if this team goes out in the first round, I mean, that's a disaster. With such high hopes this year, and it kind of feels it, it feels like one of those seasons where where injuries are just derailing the season, doesn't it? They were so good. They were so good in January. They they were one of the best teams in the NBA in January. 
They were they were scratchy. They you know they were scratching and clawing out wins and finding ways to win even with some injuries. But they, they could only do so much for so long, right? And listen, Brunson has played great. Well, this is not to to blame Brunson for anything. It's not saying Brunson has done a bad job. He's been he's been everything they could ever ask for. MVP candidate, and he should be in the MVP voting. He's not going to get it, but he should be in the voting. And, you know, he should, he should be in, the, I'd say, the top 10 of, for MVP this year. And it's not saying anything bad about him, but he just can't. I mean, how much could he do? How much do you want him to do? He's missing three key starters. Three key starters. And then the two guys, the other two guys that he picked up, Bogdanovich and Burks, have been... Duh, duh, duh. A lot to be left uh, to, you know, to the imagination with those two. Giving you five points a game. You thought the Bogdanovich would come in here and give you at least 10 to 12 points a game. And the Knicks haven't been playing great defense. The other night, they got off to the terrible, terrible start against uh, Golden State. They, they, they spotted them 14 points. You know, you, you, you blink your eye, you sit down, you, you, you bend over to pick up your beer, and you look up, and it's 14 nothing. Curry's got nine points already ripping threes. It was 24 to 5 or 22 to 5 just a couple minutes in. So now they're playing catch up the whole way. You know, they and they played well. The Knicks had a good second quarter. They got it to within six or eight, and, they, and then and then the, the lead would balloon back up to 10 or 12. And they didn't say the chance. You're not gonna win down 14 nothing and, and 24 to 5 in the first quarter against the, even if even against a team like Golden State, it was not, you know, the Golden State at, of the past. It's still a good team. They still come to play. Curry still takes it very seriously when he comes to the Garden. He doesn't know how many games he's going to be coming back to the Garden. So that makes tonight even bigger for the Knicks because you can't be falling in the, in the standings. Because it, it's kind of got the feel like if they if, if they fall a five or fall a six, they're never going to see the four again. They're never going to see that four slot again. And they're just going to continue to, 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 to drop anchor down in the standings, and you don't want that to happen. There's still a month and a half to go in the season. There's still plenty of time. They, you know, they've even had Hartenstein and and uh, Brunson missed a missed a game in there where they lost. They got lucky in one of the wins against Detroit. You know where they got with the foul call wasn't called, but they, they also got lucky the other way around. So, uh, listen, two and seven is not going to cut it for the Knicks. And it just, it has the feeling of a season that's just being derailed by injuries that had so much promise. And there's still time to get the, to get the train back on the tracks and get this thing going, but you got to get these guys back. I mean, where is Anobi? How long, like the elbow is, is it really that bad? Where was, where was this when, when he got traded? And you know what? And you look back at, at OG's career, he's, he's kind of done this. You know, you didn't realize all you heard were the good things because you don't watch him every day because he's not here. Now that he's here and you watch him every day, he has flashes of brilliance. But he's also, you know, not non-existent a lot of times. The best ability is availability, and OG Anobi does not have it. Mitchell Robinson with his ankle, okay. You know, he he hurt the ankle. And Julius Randle, I mean, he's gotta he's gotta get back on on this on on the floor. He's got to. Now, the Knicks catch a break tonight. As I said, Mitchell Robinson out, one of the top point guards in all of basketball. You know, it was going to be, it would have been nice to see him go against Brunson. But, you know, you, 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 at this point, if you're the Knicks, you just wanted, you just need wins. You know, you can't keep dropping like this. You can't keep dropping these games. They got to play better defense, too. Now, against Golden State, there wasn't a lot of points. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a real clean game either, either side. I wouldn't say the Knicks played great defense holding them, but you know it, it was just a sloppy game. But the Knicks have not played great defense in the last you know two weeks plus, and that's something that that Thibodeau teams are known for. They play good defense, they play hard, they play scrappy, and that's what the Knicks were for most of the season. But there's only so much of scrappy, hard, and grinding out wins that you can do in this league. If you're missing your stup- your superstars, you don't stand a chance, and the Knicks are missing. Two superstars, two out of their three superstars, and another very important role player in Mitchell Robinson. So it's it's it tonight is a big game, and they, like I said, catching a break with I'm um, I'm sorry, yeah, catching a break with Donovan Mitchell out. I've called him Mitchell Robinson before. Donovan Mitchell out for Cleveland, and Karis Levert is also out. So that, I mean, listen, 
They got a shorthanded Cleveland team. You, the Knicks come limping in. You got to get this win tonight. You got to get it. This is a more important game than, than it leads on to be. You know, just by looking at it, this is a more important game. Knicks got to get a win tonight. And let's see if they can. The, the, the Rangers last night, the other occupants of the Garden, was uh, they went up north to play Toronto. And Toronto's a good team. Toronto's a good hockey team. They are just behind the Rangers. Um, actually, they're, I think they're two behind the Rangers, two, two spots. I think they're in the four spot. The Rangers are the two spot in the Eastern Conference. They went up there. They got a good game, but they blew two leads. They were up one nothing. They were up 2-1. Two, uh, two they blew both the leads. They fell behind 3-2, to two, and you got Trocek, who scored his second goal with just a minute to go when they pulled the goalie on a power play. You got the game tied. So you got the point. It went into overtime. Both goalies brilliant in the overtime period because you, you very rarely see shootouts anymore these days, right? Shootouts are kind of like because the three-on-three, three, somebody scores because it's just back and forth. Odd man rushes. Odd man two-on-one, three-on-two, and and they just get caught, and then somebody, you know, these guys are too good, and they put it in the back of the net somewhere in those five minutes. Well, last night, they didn't happen. A couple good saves, a couple great saves by Toronto goalie Shesterkin. Played well. It went to a shootout, and, you know, the Rangers lost the shootout. But you know what? You got a point. You, you'll take it. You will gladly take that in Toronto. Hockey Night in Canada, Saturday night. It's a big game. It's a big night. You take that any day of the week. Now, now tomorrow is a showdown with the Florida Panthers. The Florida Panthers, top team in the Eastern Conference, two points ahead of the Rangers, one of the favorites, one of the challengers that the Rangers are going to have in the Eastern Conference to get to the finals. And tomorrow you're going to see what the, the Rangers are made of. We'll see how they do. I expect it to be a, 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 a electric crowd at the Garden, the full house. As always. I mean, it's always a full house. I you don't even have to say that. But it's going to be a big, big game, and we'll see how good the Rangers measure up against a team like Florida, who is, you know, cream of the crop in the Eastern Conference, which is, you know, the Eastern Conference is better than the Western Conference. So we'll see tomorrow how they do. Shostak is going to be in goal. It's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a good game. Get a win. Get the two points there. Rangers are okay. Now, the Islanders, the other, the Islanders are on the other end of the spectrum. The Islanders are, are fighting, fighting, fighting just to, to get into the playoffs. They're, they're, every night, it's a battle. Last night, they played Boston, who's another one of the top teams in the conference, in the NHL, really, and they beat them 5-1. Second straight win, second straight good team they beat, too. Because I'm not going to say Detroit is a real good team, but Detroit came in there on a heater, winners of like six, seven in a row, and the Islanders beat him. Last night, you got Kyle Palmer Palmieri getting a natural hat trick in the first period for nine minutes. The fastest uh, in franchise history to three goals was Kyle Palmieri last night. Three goals in, I think it was under nine minutes. The Islanders blew out uh, Boston five to one for a, a big win. Now, listen, they still got work to do. They're still, I believe, six or seven points behind Philadelphia for that last playoff spot. They have work to do, but I think what these two wins will do for the Islanders is they'll they'll make, uh, you know, they'll, they'll make it they'll make it so they don't have to sell. They don't have to put up the white flag. They still have a pulse. Seven points is a lot to make up now. In, in I guess it's probably like twenty games, right? Fifteen games left. So now you got the Islanders can't really afford any kind of slip ups. If they're going to go for it, which it looks like they're going to, then you got to go for it and you got to win every night. And you got to, you got to get points. You can't come out empty. You can't have too many empty nights with no points. Cause that seven is going to become 12 real. The seven point uh, deficit is going to become 12 real fast. Then you're out of it. And then you wasted a chance to rebuild your, your team for the future by going for it at the trade deadline, which it looks like they're going to do. So a lot going on here today. You also college basketball today. Um, it was, uh, you got St. John. You listen, you have, here, I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. You got, here's the, here's the teams on the bubble. And then last four in first four out. If you look at last four in and first four out right here, four of those eight teams are big East teams. You got Seton Hall, Providence, last four in. Now, this was done. I put this together yesterday. So this is before. I, I'm going to switch it up now. I'm going to tell you right now that I think it should be St. John's and Villanova last four in. 
and Seton Hall and Providence last, first four out. Pro, uh, Villanova went into Providence last night, beat them, beat them by like 10, 11, 12 points. Now I would put Villanova, and that helps out St. John's too, because St. John's swept Villanova in the season series. So every little win and more, you know, towards the quad one, that Villanova can stay in that quad one, it really helps St. John's. It will help out their resume a lot. And I would put St. John's back in as the last four in right now, as they have a three-game win streak. They got DePaul and Georgetown and then into the Big East tournament. Right now, if it started, the Big East tournament started right now, it would be St. John's the sixth seed playing Georgetown on that first Wednesday night. And then they the you know, let's assume they beat Georgetown. Then they would get Creighton in the quarterfinals on Thursday, which is and St. John's gonna need to win that game. Okay, because this resume right here is not it. Oh, I have it in hold on. This resume right here is not good enough to get you in to the to the to the tournament. Okay. It needs one more quad one win. That's what they need. They need one more quad one win. And I, I, I think that I think they, they could get it, but they got it. They got to listen. They, they got to get one more quad one win. They could get it in the quarterfinals. They right now they would play Creighton. If they beat Georgetown going in as the six Villanova would get the bye. I think they, they're going to be sweating it out. Listen, either way you look at it, no matter what they do here in these next two games, because these next two games, they get no credit for. They have to win the next two games. They're supposed to win the next two games. If they win them, then you go into the tournament. You gotta, you gotta win it. You gotta do some work in the tournament, in the Big East tournament. Next, the, the the St. John's is just no doubt about it. They gotta get a couple wins in the Big East tournament. If they get the bye, which I I don't know if they're going to, because we'll talk about Villanova in a second. They got a tough tough game with Seton Hall coming up. St. John's can very easily get that bye. If they get the bye, they won't play Creighton but they will have the bye. They're still going to need a win. They're going to need to get it to Friday then. Nick's got to get to that semifinal Friday. Somehow, Nick's, listen to me. St. John's has to get to the semifinal Friday of the Big East tournament somehow, some way. And then they could, uh, you know, exhale a little bit on Selection Sunday because I think they'll be okay. I think they'll have the resume to get in. But without that, they're going to really be sweating out. They're going to need help if they don't get any wins because that first game is going to be they play Georgetown, then they play DePaul. That's the end of the regular season. Then they go into the Big East tournament. They're going to probably play either Georgetown or DePaul again. And they're not going to get any credit for that win either. So they're going to need to get the Thursday win. We'll see if they can get it. I don't know if they will. I mean, it, it, listen, they're, they're certainly capable. They are certainly capable of it. But I don't, I, you know, this team has just been wildly inconsistent. Up and down all year. They been, They played excellent since... Patino kind of called them out and said his team stinks. And it looks like they're going to head into the Big East tournament on a five-game win streak. So we'll see how it goes. I, 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 I don't know what to think of St. John's, to be honest with you. I really don't. But I do think that they can be a tournament team. They still have work to do, though. And it's certainly not over. They still have work to do. And it can, it, listen, they can beat Creighton. They, they, they beat Creighton. They blew Creighton out just a, a two weeks ago. Blew them out at home at Creighton. So it's definitely doable for this team. When this team plays up to their potential, they're not a bad basketball team. Now, are they going to end up in Dayton? It's a, it's a very real possibility that they end up in Dayton, the first four, which to me, uh, I, I told you many times, not a tournament game. Not a tournament game. You got to make it past that. You got to be into the brackets if you want me to consider you in the NCAA tournament. And St. John's has been a long, long time since they've done any kind of damage in the NCAA tournament. They, they went to the first four a couple of years ago, five years ago now. So it's even a while since they've been there. 2019, lost in Dayton, out. That, that's, not the, that's not the tournament. You know, Tuesday night. Nobody, you know, Thursday at noon is when the tournament starts. You got to be alive then. And if you're playing in Dayton, you got to win a game to get there. So, and they didn't do it last time. It's been a long time since St. John's. The time before that, I, I don't know when it was exactly. It was probably 2017, maybe 18. They played the first round out west, 1030 at night. Another one out. You know, nobody saw it. Stay up with the all hours of the night to watch St. John's at 1030. 
and and they got killed. So listen, it's it's very it's very interesting. It's going to be a very interesting couple days. The Big East tournament. You got a bunch of teams at the lower end of the bracket, the lower end of the of the league that need wins. They're right on the bubble. Seton Hall right on the bubble. Providence, I think, is out after losing last night to Villanova at home. I think that that probably buries Providence. Seton Hall and Villanova now play each other. That could help St. John's, especially if, C- if uh, Villanova can get the win. It's kind of a, a damned if you do, damned if you don't, because if Villanova gets the win, they're going to get the bye in the first round. So St. John's will have to play that first day. But it will also help out St. John's resume because they swept Villanova and it'll bump them up into a quad one win. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's not going to be easy. L- listen, the bottom line is St. John's going to be sweating it out. Selection Sunday. You need one more win. Get, get to Friday of the Big East tournament and you feel much, much better about your chances going into, into the Selection Sunday and into a win and, you know, into the NCAA tournament possibly. So, you know, that, that, that's, that, that's what's going on there. Um, as far as baseball goes, not, not much going on. Listen, uh, the, the pitchers are still unsigned. Mets aren't signing them. Um, you had Daniel Vogelback, who's now on Toronto, hit a long home run against the Yankees. It took, a, took his time getting around the bases, which, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you taking your time getting around the bases? It's spring training. It's March 1st. Okay, you hit the, you ran into one. And, and Daniel Volbeck, we know that. Mets fans would know that. We know Daniel Volbeck, every once in a while, he's going to run into one, and he's going to hit it a mile. But to hot dog it around the bases, and the Yankees took notice. A couple of the Yankees said, you know, I don't forget things like that. I don't forget anything. He's going to get hit. When Toronto comes to the, <laughs> comes to the stadium, first time, Volbeck's going to get hit. Now, he deserves every bit of it, right? That, that, that's baseball, first of all. But what are you doing hot dog in a, a, a home run in spring training? I mean, come on. This is, this is, this is why I, I'm just glad the Mets just washed their hands of Daniel Vogelback. Because besides the fact that he can't hit the water if he jumps out of a boat half the time, he does stuff like this. It's just driving you crazy. Like, there's no need to wake the giant that is the Yankees. Let them, you know, Toronto's a good baseball team. They could very easily, they could finish ahead of the Yankees very easily. So could, and obviously Baltimore's the defending champions. And Daniel Vogelback hits a long home run in, in February or, or first day of March. And he's, you know, slowing it up around the bases. Come on. I, I, I mean, I didn't. I, I saw the replay. I didn't see it. I don't really watch these baseball games, especially now that the weather's getting nicer and everything. So, listen, Daniel Vogelback. He's he's he's. You don't want Vogelback on your team because he stinks. He's gonna make outs when you need a hit. He's not. He's gonna run into one, hit a meaningless home run. He's gonna do stuff like this. That's gonna get your whole team into a fight at some point in the regular season when the Yankees throw at him, and you gotta go defend him because he's on your team, right? So it's you know it's really. Stupid for Daniel Vogelback to do something like that. So that's what's going on. Um, beautiful day today. First, finally got some spring weather. I went out. I wore a hoodie. Thinking I was like, oh, you know, it's nice. We don't need to wear jackets. I went out in a hoodie and I was hot. So I got, I, I took the went the t-shirt. I hope you got out today. It was beautiful, beautiful. The best day of the year so far. This is you know this is what March is. Something you'll get today, sixty five degrees. Then you'll get rain. Or, uh, then you'll get snow next week. So you never know. I've gone to the Big East tournament where it's snowing, and I've gone where it's 75 degrees. But we're 10 days from the Big East tournament. We are, I believe, I guess two weeks, right? Two weeks, 14 days from Selection Sunday. So everything starts to kind of pick up now. You got the Knicks with a big game tonight. Knicks, Cavs, uh, Donovan Mitchell out for the Cavs. Karis LeVert out for the Cavs. Knicks need to win. All right, no excuses tonight. Go out there, play a solid game, win, get a win, and then just hope you get these guys back because they, they, listen, they can't tread water much longer. And then they're sinking because they're not really treading water. Two and seven in the last nine is not treading water. That's sinking. And if they, end the, if they find themselves in the sixth spot, they're, they're not getting out of the first round. And that'd be a shame because it's been a fun season. It's a good team. It's a likable team. 
The city's really kind of grabbed onto this team and to see the, the whole thing, and it just feels like it's falling apart. It really does. As far as the Rangers go, tomorrow night, big game tomorrow night. Florida in town, best team in the East. Rangers right there with them, two points behind them. That's going to be a marquee matchup tomorrow night at the Garden. Islanders with a good win last night. 5-1, you got Palmieri scoring a hat-trick in nine minutes in the first period. You know, they, listen, they've they won a couple games. The Islanders are kind of getting back in the playoff conversation, but they dug themselves a pretty big hole the first couple months of the season. I don't know if they're going to be able to dig out of it because they're one or two slip-ups. You know, three, they're a three-game losing streak away from it's over. So that's what's going on there. Nothing really with the Mets. Yankees, uh, the, the Daniel Vogelbach thing. We'll revisit that when Toronto plays the Yankees early in the season. They throw at him because when he gets it, he deserves it. Deserves every bit of it. So that's what's going on. I hope you got outside. Enjoyed the beautiful day. Uh, Brett will be back next week. We'll see if I'm going to try and get someone on and talk about uh, the, the tournament, Selection Sunday, stuff like that. We'll see who we can get on. And that's pretty much it. So that does it for today. Uh, remember, don't forget, rate, review, and subscribe. Every little bit helps. Uh, if you do, watch it on YouTube, subscribe. If you find us wherever you find us, also you can find us at LockedUpSports.net. We can watch any episode there. And that pretty much does it. So I will talk to you guys later this week. Uh, that does it for us. I'm Bob Walters. See ya.